Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got an exciting all new show in store for you this week. I'll take you on a trip to Linwood, Michigan, where we stop in at Frank's Great Outdoors to check out their brand new 3D archery course there. You won't want to miss that story. Jordan will introduce us to a decoy carver. And speaking of decoys, Jimmy's got some exciting waterfall action in store for us. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have some waterfall action to kind of kick things off. September 1 is the start of the early goose season. I'm going to show you what my first couple of days of the season look like. We're also going to show you a hunt from mid-Michigan, so lots of good action from around the state. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. WorkingPerson.com. From the factory floor to the job site and into the field, WorkingPerson.com supplies work boots and shoes, workwear, safety gear, and more. For individuals or outfitting your whole team, Learn more at workingperson.com. DTE believes to lead, we have to do what's right. So we're tripling renewables and cutting carbon emissions in half over the next 10 years. DTE. The opener of the early waterfall season seems to me anyways is sort of the kickoff to fall. Well, I know it's not, but it feels that way. You have to find your camos, get the guns out and dust it off. It's a fun time of the year for sure. Today I was joining a group that I have hunted with before as they took out some very deserving veterans. Well, it ain't panning out the way I thought it would so far, but... Lots of birds though. Yeah, there is lots of birds, but um, hopefully we'll get some to come in here in a little while. It's hard when they sit down in the same field as us, eh? Yeah. Oh well, what do you do? Who we got hunting with us today? We got uh, Naomi Wildrum over there, and her dad Dave out there, my buddy Mikey P, and uh, a few veterans from Wounded Warrior Project, so... Yeah, uh, why, do you, why do you like to take these vets out? Just something I love to do. I mean, it's uh, something to give back to them and let them enjoy the the time out here in the field just like we are so nice does calling matter much this time of the year no not really you don't want to call too much because birds are kind of in smaller family groups but some of them can be in 
you know, a little larger groups, but. Mike takes groups out through Operation Injured Soldier. That group, which was formed here in Michigan, takes wounded vets on all sorts of fun trips, and many are fishing and hunting trips. You can learn more about them and see what events are coming up on their website. The vets we had here today were Terry Sprawl, John Howe, and Alex Brody. A couple of the guys had hunted geese before, but not really basically in town like we were today. When hunting in this township here in Ottawa County, you had to use steel shot that was no bigger than size 6, and you also had to be at least 500 feet from a structure. We had lots of birds in our field, but very few got close enough for us to shoot at. Like I said, we did have lots of birds in our field and our A-frame blind was hiding us very well. But for whatever reason, the birds thought other parts of our field looked a little bit better. It was also great to have Naomi Woldem along to see her pair of black labs working these birds. Well, we got a couple at least. One, one band. That's kind of a miracle for us. <laughs> but yeah, they'll start trickling in. The morning was picture perfect, but the birds didn't quite read the script today. But everyone involved had a great day for sure, and we got to say thanks to some very deserving guys. Terry Sprawl, known better as Duck, and uh, Frank Amuth. Okay, and uh, what, what branch of the service were you in? I was in the Army. And for what years? Uh, 68 to 70. Awesome. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you. And you are? John Howe. And John, what branch were you in? I was in the Army. For how many years? For almost 26 years. Wow. Well, yeah. thanks for being here today. Thank you. It was a great time. How'd you guys hear about this hunt? Uh, Operation Injury Soldier. Okay. Dave. Nice. And you are? Alex Brody, uh, Marine vet. Did eight years from Flint, Michigan. Nice. Well, thank you for being here today. Thank you. So that was September 1. September 2nd found me tagging along with Mike and his crew as they hosted another group, this time in Nuego County, not too far from the town of Fremont. Now we knew going in that this specific spot was more of a midday loafing area. So when we had some birds work us first thing in the morning, we were all surprised and feeling pretty lucky. <laughs> The group today was also kind of a cool story. You see, these guys actually purchased this hunt at a Michigan Duck Hunters Association dinner, and the proceeds, you guessed it, go to help support Operation Injured Soldier. This group of buddies consisting of Hans, Dennis, Drew, and Jack were a ton of fun. It also reminded me of just how great waterfowling can be. It is hard to beat sitting around with friends and reliving old hunting stories, watching good dogs work, and seeing the sunrise. And once in a while, some birds show up. It was a very fun morning. This loafing spot near these ponds is where the birds wanted to be after about 10 a.m. or so. So even though the morning was a little slow, the midday hunt had birds in the air. Thanks to all who made these days possible. The guys today that helped support Operation Injured Soldiers, the vets who gave so much, and Mike and his crew for putting it all together, right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, as you can see, we had a lot of fun those first couple days of the season there in West Michigan. We're going to head a little bit east right now and join Jordan Brown and his group to see how they did on the opening morning.
Here we are in uh, central Michigan, goose hunting. We got a nice group today, and Jordan was able to join us and do some filming uh, of our goose hunt. Uh, there's been about 150 to 200 honkers in this hay field for the last probably week, roughly. Um, and they've been acting pretty well coming in uh, every single day, so hopefully it works out that way, and we'll see how, how the hunt goes. Uh, how many decoys you got out? What's the spread look like in the, in the hay field here? Uh, so today we're running about 30 or 34 Dave Smiths. They're all full bodies. Um, it's just uh, you know little family groups here and there in front of us within 30 yards of the blind. We got a little bit of a breeze, so that should help us. Um, and we got layout blinds lined up here, and we should be in good shape. Got a nice hide. Hopefully the birds cooperate. <laughs> Kill these two right out front, guys. Somebody behind us or no? Right here, behind us, behind us, behind us, behind us. There you go. We were seeing a decent number of geese, but for whatever reason, we just couldn't quite get them to land in our setup. We tried moving the decoys around a little bit, but unfortunately, the result was the same. We could get them close, but just couldn't quite get them to land in our spread. Kill them out front, guys. Uh, we had a little bit slower morning than is expected, but that's why they call it hunting, not killing. Uh, sometimes the weather changes, the birds change, whatever the case may be. It just doesn't work out the way that you saw it happen in your head. And that's okay, but probably going to come back out and try it again this afternoon because I think these birds are still around. They just didn't want uh, this hay this morning. So we'll play it by ear, and hopefully this afternoon uh, the result's a little bit better. But at the end of the day, we had a great morning out here with some great guys. Shared some awesome conversation, and the camaraderie of, of waterfowling is why we do it. We aren't out here to kill a limit every day. That makes it fun, but at the end of the day, that's not, not the reason we do what we do. So grateful to be out here. We got a beautiful sunny day. Uh, glad to have Jordan along, and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Although the geese didn't cooperate on this particular hunt, it was nice to be back in a layout blind. Special thanks to Connor and the crew for letting me tag along on a fun day in the field here in central Michigan. Well, one thing that is consistent when it comes to both duck hunting and goose hunting is decoys. Decoy placement and what kind of decoys you're going to use. In this next story, we're going to show you what goes into making handmade duck decoys. I'm Corey Lucas, I'm the founder and decoy specialist here at Cedar Run Decoy Company and we, we kind of founded this company um, to kind of hold on to the traditions of duck hunting which included um, hunting over hand carved decoys. So that's, that's kind of where my head started uh, spinning with an idea to create a company was to, to keep that tradition alive and, and that all started through it kind of an organic process where I was duck hunting and I was hunting over plastic decoys and I was kind of doing things um, the way that a lot of hunters do nowadays and using spinning wing decoys and these plastics and I just I just wanted to do more with duck hunting I wanted to be more involved with it or more in touch with with the traditions of duck hunting and so I was I was going to school at the time um, to get my biology degree and start this career in, in conservation and I literally just went down to the basements of the library at Western Michigan University and, and dug up some books, did it the old fashioned way, dug up some books on decoy carving. And I you know, laid out my first pattern and did a lot of things wrong on those first few decoys I did. And then I got connected with a master carver in our area here, Willie McDonald. And 
The second I took one of his classes that he had invited me to, it just kind of exploded for me. Things started clicking. I got really passionate about it and started building like full rigs for hunting. The carving process starts with a large block of cork, which is eventually cut down to the rough shape of a duck, and then fine-tuned from there. So here we're going to draw our, our guidelines for carving. Um, we like to put a center line in there, and I like to put the tops of the wings on there, and then also where our head platform is going to be. So once we get it to this stage, we use a draw knife, more the traditional method of carving. I use that to rough it out, and really that is the, the fastest way to get this done. You just take that and cut off chunks of the, of the cork. What you're trying to do is just round that, that body off, so you're trying to keep everything carved to the round. And then up here on the front, take a lot of it off. Because what a duck, the way that a duck's body is designed is to shed water. And so you actually have water that will shed this way off the back. It will shed back down this way off the back. So you want to create these kind of these channels for water in front of the duck. So that's what I'm doing right here. So the bodies start with a block of cork. And that cork is comes off a cork tree, so it's 100% uh, sustainable because it's the bark off a cork tree. So they actually just strip that bark off, the bark regrows, they grind that cork up into kind of a fine grind. It's the excess material from wine bottle stoppers. They, they, they compact it into a, a block of cork, and then that's what we cut our, our body patterns out of. The heads are made out of basswood, um, and the same process there where we draw a template on there and then we we cut our, our rough outs out of that. You know, the whole point in hand carved decoys is that the person hunting over there, over them, gets that feel for the uniqueness of that decoy. You know, like that's the only one that looks exactly like that as opposed to some cookie cutter decoys. And so we use some guidelines just to make sure we've got some symmetry, but then the rest is kind of done by feel. And I think, you know, in reality, no two birds are alike. I mean, if you're an avid duck hunter, you know that, you know, no two Drake wood ducks look the same, the, the, the coloring on the feathers aren't the same, the size of them aren't the same, and so it, it makes more sense to us to do more of a organic or natural feel to these ducks, make them a little bit different, they all have different, slightly different head positions, they may have slightly different um, paint on the heads or, you know, a wider head or a taller head, and so that's all kind of intentional when we do our decoys. The actual carving part of the decoy building process goes by pretty quickly, but the following steps take a little more attention to detail. So yeah, in this, this step we're going to texture the duck, and this is going to add that extra layer of protection um, for water penetration, but it's also going to give the duck a more lifelike look. And then we'll start to kind of stamp that out, and what that's doing is pulling some texture onto the duck. The final step in the decoy building process is the most time consuming and the most difficult, the painting process. So what we draw in first is kind of where that line between the side pocket and the breast is going to come together, which you can see on this duck right through here. So we'll do that on both sides, try to keep that, that symmetry. And this is just kind of your rough, your rough outline. It's just to keep you guided when you're doing your blocking of the paints. Redheads are fairly simple. There's very specific colors because you're trying to capture the realism and the color of the duck so that, you know, when you're hunting over these that they're seeing their species and they're, they're tying into them. A lot of duck hunters could tell you that, you know, they'll have a flock of mixed decoys out there and you get, you know, your blue winged teals, for instance, come in and they'll fly and they'll land right over on the same side as the blue winged teals. So they're looking for those specific colors. At the core of, of who we are and what we do is 
trying to keep that, that decoy carving tradition alive and trying to contribute back to conservation in some way. And so that's why our, our motto is uh, built on honoring traditions focused on conservation because we're trying to meld those two worlds together. We've made a concerted effort to, to be involved in, in waterfowl conservation, whether it's, it's providing funds to partners that can, can kind of make that money go farther in the waterfowl world, or it's just educating people on how to do a better job on their own properties on, uh, to draw waterfowl in. And so we're kind of involved, involved in a lot of those processes too um, in the conservation world. And so I think that's something that's unique for us and, and something we're really passionate about. Turning a block of cork into a lifelike decoy is truly a work of art. And I thoroughly enjoyed learning more about the process. Special thanks to Corey for teaching us all a little bit about what goes in to making a hand carved decoy. Well, it's the beginning of September, and that means that archery season is less than a month away now, and we have a brand new place in Michigan here where you can hone your archery skills. Sportsmen and women have been passing through the doors here at Frank's for over 75 years now, but there's a recent addition that offers an outdoor activity for archers to take part in. The outdoor 3D archery course on the land behind the store is freshly completed, ready to go, and offers 10 lanes with 20 3D targets at different distances. I checked in with Andy Gorski, who was here shooting with some friends. We got a new 3D course all back here, had a little piece of chunk of land that we weren't doing nothing with and want to make something happen. So we got 10 lanes, two targets per lane. We just opened the range a couple weeks ago, got some local shooters here all ages got our resident uh, archery tech mike mullet state champion iaa shooter mike mullet was shooting the course today with andy and a few young archers 20 year old arissa and her 16 year old brother devin were here from bay city testing their shooting skills also shooting with the group today was 13 year old audrey from kakalan we had some gusts of winds that were adding a challenging twist to the course today Mike says they've been talking about building a 3D archery course for a little while here now and is excited it's finally open. Mike ran through the layout of the course here. So we got 20 targets out here, 10 lanes. Uh, we got three different uh, stakes. So you got a white stake, that's youth, beginners, traditional, that's going to be a 25 yard max. Red stake is a 40 yard max, so that's what we call our basically our hunting class stake. And then we have a blue uh, stake which is our open stake, that's gonna be a 50 yard max. So we've got a mix of Reinhardt targets as well as some big shot targets. And it varies anywhere from, I think our shortest, shortest shot is 13 yards and all the way out, if you wanted to take the Hail Mary shot at Sasquatch, it's like 68 yards. Even though there are a few sportsmen's clubs with archery ranges in the outlying areas, Mike says a lot of local archers have been asking for a new place to hone their skills. That's what we hope to. Uh, a couple years ago, before COVID and everything, I had a, we called it a Tuesday tune-up. It was five targets, you know, for the hunting guys that come out and just stretch your arms, make sure all their equipment's ready to go. And that's what we're hoping to do here. There's nothing like this in the area, so we wanted to get the targets used and let them know that we've got a bow tech and full staff on there that can help them out. Well, we're getting closer. <laughs> 3D archery courses are a fun way for folks of all different skill levels to compete while improving those archery skills or getting their new gear dialed in for the hunting season. Young Audrey was shooting from the white stakes today and was having a great time. What do you think of the course? I think it's pretty cool. I like all the different uh, varieties of animals they have and the distances is really nice. So how long have you been shooting? Uh, two years. Okay, how old are you? I am 13. Okay, what do you think of it so far? It's, it's pretty fun. I really like it. I really like doing stuff like this. What do you like about archery? Uh, I think just being outside and shooting is the best part, I think. Awesome. Now will you hunt too this fall? Uh, hopefully. Okay, cool. 16-year-old Devin was also having a good time today. Well, how long have you been shooting, Devin? Uh, I think six years. Okay, how old are you? 16. Okay, that's awesome. So how did you get started with archery? Uh, my buddy Miles, he uh, invited me over to Bay City Bowman's. So started shooting with him and then 
he quit, so I kept shooting. That's awesome. And you hunt too? Yeah. Very cool. So what do you think of this? Have you been out to this range before? Mm, not yet, but we did do work out here. We trimmed the trees. Oh, you did? Nice. Yeah. Mike says the course has already had some steady activity this summer. We've been averaging anywhere probably from, you know, a set of guys, two guys to, you know, six or eight guys, you know, on some, some days. So uh, it takes you about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how many guys you got. So come out and spend a good day, well, hopefully when it's not windy. With archery season closing in fast, 3D archery ranges are a great way to practice your technique or put those last minute adjustments to the test while having fun with family and friends. The course here at Frank's is open seven days a week during regular business hours. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. We've got all sorts of exciting things headed your way. We'll introduce you to some kids who are getting into fishing in downtown Detroit. We'll have some dog training tips for you. And next weekend is already youth deer season and bear season here in Michigan. You won't want to miss those upcoming stories. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, online, always a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website. We have full episodes of the show there every week. We're also on most of the social media platforms as well as YouTube, so you can check us out there and make sure that you are joining us over the next several weeks. Lots of brand new stuff. It is a great time of the year to be a sportsman here in the great state of Michigan. Hopefully, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at GreenMarkEquipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime Bows. Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan, G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons.